Welcome back here with Money, Money, Money. We are decoding the budget and what it means for housing. Well, we've discussed the good news on the long-term capital gains tax regime. Now for the hit, specifically for those who have a second home and those who've taken a home loan to get that second loan. So this could be a pretty big announcement, Pariza, don't you think? Yeah. Because earlier you could offset the entire loss on the interest that you have mm. to pay out. Right. And now that's restricted to just 2 lakh rupees, right? Yeah. So actually this came out really only in the fine print of the you know, the finance bill. Uh, just one small correction, everyone has been talking about second home. Okay, mm. so I'll maybe just clarify the existing provisions. What is the current provision under the law is that for people who believe in creating assets and investing in the real estate sector, if the property was self-occupied, if I'm staying there as an individual, that's a self-occupied property, even if that was on a mortgage, the interest deduction was capped at 2 lakhs per annum mm. for self-occupied property. Yeah. Okay. And for any other property, uh, whether even if it's the first home, if it was a rented home, okay, mm. the rent income was offered to tax and the interest deduction, of course, with the kind of rental yields and the amount of interest on home loan, the interest outgo can be very huge, particularly in the first year, in the mm. first few years, mm. depending on your EMI and your interest charts. So for any property which was rented or deemed to be let out, so any mm. more than one property is always deemed to be let out, and India has this notional rent taxation. Yeah. For these properties, if they were on a mortgage, the actual interest outgo, irrespective of the amount, was being allowed as a deduction. Even if you were not staying in that house, it Even might be if empty not, or yeah. you might have actually let it out. Let it out. So either yeah. it's factually let it out, in which mm. case you're offering the rental income to tax, mm. or even if it's lying vacant, if it's more than one home, there was a notional rent tax. Mm. There is a notional rent taxation. So for these, pro and largely that's why it used to happen that, you know, if you have largely H&I people who believe in investing in real estate, mm. they would have these second and third homes yeah. on loans. Yeah. And uh, the entire interest outgo was being allowed as a deduction without any caps. Okay? Mm, mm. So the resultant net loss, and it's always going to be a loss considering, uh, considering your rental huge, yields in, and your costs, huge interest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That was being used to offset legitimately from either your salary income or mm. any other income in the current mm, tax mm. year. So you were reducing your tax burden Absolutely. legitimately. Absolutely. Okay? And of course, the resultant loss was being allowed to carry forward for set off for the next eight years. Mm. And that could be set off only against income from house property, if any, in the subsequent years. Hmm. Now what is proposed is that, you know, this uh, interest deduction, even for the other properties. So self-occupied was always two lakhs, no change. Lakhs, yeah. For the balanced properties, irrespective of whether it's rented, that is also going to be capped at 2, two lakhs. lakhs. Okay, It's quite a dramatic change it's that we're quite talking a dramatic about. Change. So, Anshuman, come in on this. Maybe the objective of the government is very clear that they want to offer tax relief that to only up till 2 lakh rupees to genuine home occupiers and not to people who are looking at investments or not to look, you know, look at people who are hoping for some smart financial planning. Is this going to kill the investment market, particularly for you know, the middle class housing? Uh, again, uh, I would say that, you know, uh, it will not kill the investment market. It will discourage some investment. The problem is, I, I don't think this should have happened. Uh, if you look at the yield uh, in, in, in an apartment investment or residential investment, you know, yields are 1 to 2 percent, right? So yields are already very low. Of course, in India, people are not investing uh, on yields. They're investing for capital uh, gains or capital appreciation of the real estate. But if you uh, look at this last couple of years, the capital appreciation of, has also been uh, very minimal. Yields are still very low. And then you're taxing, uh, you know, uh, if someone wants to buy a second or third house, that the, the taxation is also high. Uh, so I really uh, feel, I really uh, wish the FM had not done this. Uh, because, you know, there is nothing wrong in, in encouraging investments in, uh, in real estate, especially in a slow market. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so it will dampen investment to some extent. Uh, but the, the fact is the market is already slow. So this is just one added uh, uh, thing which was not required. Uh, it will impact to some extent. But the people who are investing in real estate, I don't think tax will be the only deterrent. It will be the function of the market. So if, for example, the, the, there is uh, prices start going up, in, in, let's say if the real estate market picks up, then of course nobody looks at taxes because those, right. those are mostly which covered. Is, which is my but next question. Market, Anshuman, yeah. which is exactly my next question because you're the real estate expert here. So would you advise? If, let's say someone has 25-30 lakh rupees, a pool of capital lying on the side. Earlier, perhaps it was a you know a good, prudent uh, you know planning and taxation idea to go.
go ahead, buy a second home, use that loss, set it off against your uh, you know other income taxation liability. But now looking at the real estate market and that the tax benefit has been taken away, would you advise people to go out there and invest in tier two, tier three properties? See, uh, there are a couple of things. First of all, uh, there is, especially for the low cost, what we call low cost and the middle income MIG group of housing, there is, uh, uh, the government has done quite a bit on interest, uh, so there is a 4% in, in interest subvention uh, up to certain amount, right? So the cost of acquisition goes, the cost of money, of course, goes down uh, significantly. So that should, I feel, encourage more people to, notwithstanding the tax issues, that will encourage more people to invest in low-cost housing, uh, to affordable housing, uh, because because the interest subvention. However, uh, anything above that, certainly, you know, the capital appreciation, like I said, has been less, yields are low and now there's a tax burden that may discourage uh, you know more uh, investors to go into residential market till the time the market doesn't start picking up okay all right i heard an interesting phrase uh, invest in low cost housing maybe that's a micro market that, that people will look at but uh, one more sort of you know hmm. hit or a minor hmm. issue that that's come up in a new concept if you're paying rent over 50,000 rupees, and a lot of people in cities like Mumbai and Delhi and NCRR, right. Right. Um, then there's a concept of withholding tax on the tenant, or basically right. a tax deducted right. at source that mm -hmm. has to be paid out. Why would the government do that, Parizad? What's the rationale? Yeah. It's, it's at 5% if it's right. I'm correct. 5% yeah. Yeah. The way I was thinking about it or looking about it in the absence of much uh, legislative intent since it's a new provision is that again, you know, if you look at it, uh, people sometimes, you know, they're not all, but there are at times there's a tendency to have frivolous rent receipts or, you know, payment of rent to relatives again. Maybe I was just thinking that could be the intention to curb all this because see, this mm -hmm. is again is a, the trust is on proper compliance and you know, nothing hanky-panky as far as tax uh, compliance is concerned. All right, we're going to take a quick break on that note. On the other side, the budget also contained a lot of announcements for real estate developers, particularly those companies that are investing or rather developing uh, affordable housing. What does that mean for you, the prospective investor or buyer? We'll get to that after the break.